This video clip has been developed for use in the AEDT 1120U Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies course. And the title of this video clip is PBL Scenario B, Exploring the Purposes of Digital Technology. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what, if any, commonalities can be defined between the various digital technologies that are used for education purposes in the Wordle that was shown in the slide presentation? Number two, what is the definition of digital technologies that is being used for this course? Number three, what are the characteristics of each of the three major computing eras? And number four, how do the computer functionality models compare? What commonalities exist? and what anomalies exist. The following few slides are designed to present you with a context or situation within which you will need to identify a problem or several problems that you and your group members will explore over the next few weeks. Once you have identified your problem or problems, you should begin to organize the knowledge and resources that are already available to your group or the knowledge and resources which will need to be constructed found in order to create a solution that will be presented in a few weeks to the rest of the class. So continue on then. The past few years have seen the introduction of a plethora of devices, applications, platforms, websites, and other technologies. Most of these were developed for business or consumer markets, but slowly, and some would say inevitably, they are starting to appear in education contexts. See how many of the following technologies you can recognize in the Wordle shown on this slide. Coursera, BYOD, which stands for Bring Your Own Device, Khan Academy, social networking sites, and there are many of these. CMSs, Content Management Systems, MOOCs, or Massive Open Online Courses, Clickers, Interactive Whiteboards, and the list goes on. What is the significance of all of these opportunities and what do they offer to educators and learners? When studying any topic, it's best to define what we're really talking about just to ensure that we are all talking about the same thing. Technologies of all kinds can be loosely as well as broadly defined as things that help make our lives easier. Since we are talking about education context, the technologies we will discuss will be those that make our lives as educators and learners easier. Narrowing the definition like this still allows for a wide variety of devices and ideas. Remember that things that make our lives easier do not have to be physical in their nature. So everything from Socratic teaching methods to textbooks to school buildings to chalk to computers and graphing calculators are all technologies. Only a few are digital though. Digital systems, as compared to analog systems, are those that are dis based on discrete values such as zero or one. As an example, think about a digital clock, which can only display hours and minutes in discrete numbers such as 935. Digital technologies do not have to be electronic. However, for all intents and purposes, most are, as electronics allows for the easy conversion of real-world information into a binary zeros and ones numeric format. In order to convert the real world information into digital format, a process is required and combined with memory of some kind so that the pre-processed and post-processed information can be stored. This is the basis of central computing processing units in modern computers which form the heart of most digital technologies currently in use. While there have been several examples of mechanical non-digital computers or computational devices such as the Charles Babbage Analytic Engine or a slide rule, in this course we will be attending strictly to the digital side of the equation. Regardless of the type of computer, mainframes, personal computers, or the newest mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets, according to the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, or IEEE, the organized, global organization that is responsible for establishing standards for electronic hardware, when distilled to the most essential characteristics, computers can only do three things. That is, transmit information, store information, 
and processed information. These three characteristics not only define what a computer can do, they also determine to some extent what can be done with computers and other derivative technologies. On the basis of these characteristics, computers and other digital technologies have developed over the past decades. The next few slides will provide a brief overview of the historical development of digital technologies. The developmental history of digital electronic computers can be categorized in three main eras, each with their own particular characteristics. The eras are as follows. Mainframes. Characteristics of mainframes is a rudimentary interface, primarily standalone programs, and sometimes you actually had to program the computer because there was so little um, memory that would be associated with it, so you could load it in with uh, external devices. Uh, there were rudimentary networks to link the computers to each other, and generally speaking, there was a large corporate presence only. Uh, due to the large size and the expense uh, involved with running a mainframe computer. Second era, personal computers. The um, era of per personal computers uh, allowed for a progress from a command line interface to the current graphical user interface, or GUI, G-U-I. Software suites such as WordPerfect Office, Microsoft Office, and OpenOffice were developed. So these consist of multiple programs within the suite itself. Although originally developed to link mainframes, the World Wide Web and Internet evolved and expanded to connect millions of personal computers. And finally, individual use. Uh, so the personal computers allowed for individual use for business and personal use. The third era, mobile devices. Here we see a concept of apps arises, allowing for the independent development and sale through online stores. We see the development of um, data and information that becomes independent from the apps used to create and format it. Cloud computing emerges, leading to the obsolescence of portable media. And finally, the separation of enterprise and consumer usage of computers. A high-level analysis of the history of digital computers allows for the identification of several trends. Some of these are identified below. There has been a gradual diminution of the size of computers to the point where, if you consider a smartphone to be a computer, they have become in a wearable accessory. Operating systems and other software packages were traditionally bound to hardware, but now are available for a wide variety of platforms. You can take a look at the operating systems um, referred to as Linux, Android, Windows, Apple, BlackBerry, uh, etc., and include offerings from commercial and open source organizations. Computer languages have developed from machine language to sophisticated object oriented high level languages that are increasingly powerful. For example, hypertext markup language which traditionally is not a, um, a programming language, but it is a markup language that is used specifically for uh, the Internet and the World Wide Web. Um, anyways, HTML5, um, which is the latest version of HTML, it incorporates support for interactive sessions on web pages without the need for add-ons such as Flash. Moving on, next trend. Sophistication, power, variety, and low pricing have led to higher levels of personal freedom usage and competency within the lives of, of humans. There are moves away from the need for humans to adapt themselves to computers, to computers being adapted to fit into the lives of humans. And finally, operating systems have become increasingly transparent or less obvious, allowing more natural, and this is in quotes, interactions with computers. You are invited to explore each of the models that are described in the following table. So you'll find in the middle of this table uh, the IEEE definition of what computer hardware can do, that is transmit, store, and process, but you'll also find additional 
uh, mechanisms and models that have been developed to deal with these. And we'll be looking in depth into the next one underneath IEEE um, in the remainder of this course, the Desjardins model, um, which deals with technical competencies, social competencies, information competencies, and epistemological competencies. There is also an ISTE um, model, and a UNESCO model, and an OECD model that have been developed um, that go along these lines as well. There are some differences and some similarities between all of them. The synthesis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. How are the digital technologies listed in the Wordle related to education, and what are the links between these ideas? Number two, the definition of digital technologies used in this presentation points to electronic computers and technologies that involve computers in some way. Identify other digital technologies that could be used for teaching and learning which do not involve an electronic computer. And number three, are there other functions that a computer can perform that are not listed in the IEEE list? Describe these and discuss why IEEE would not include these functions. And number four, what are the implications of trends that are described regarding computer history for teaching and uh, learning? And that brings us to the end of this um, set of synthesis questions and the end of this video clip.